Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Evolution Show. So grab a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and let's catch up. Cheers. Welcome to part two of my conversation with my dad, Bill, the founder of The Evolution Store. In this part of our discussion, we talk about our large butterfly displays. I hope you enjoy this part of the video. Thanks for watching. One um, of the big cases that people really liked mm -hmm. was one with just like 20 more foes in a row. Sure. Well, that, that one's pretty striking. I think people feel like that's really impressive. Sure. Well, that's where we began when we started designing larger cases. Mm -hmm. Something very simple, mm -hmm. but something that makes that would make a statement. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, that's probably very popular. And so the, the cases are 30 by 30 inches, right? Squares. So we often call them 30 by 30s. Mm -hmm. um, but they're basically large display cases, and those don't have the glass back. They, they're white in the back. Yeah, that has, well, there are different reasons for that, but that has a plastisote yes. back, which is a spongy material. And it allows us to pin mm -hmm. butterflies into it. So that's what we do with those larger cases. Yeah, and I like the um, the construction of the 30 by 30 frames too. Is such that it's kind of like a sandwich, like it's a it's a two two piece case, right? You could remove the top of it. It mm -hmm. has little hooks holding it on, but you can take the entire top part off to work on the butterflies. So I want to talk about the other, um, the other large frame that was very popular. Um, this is one of the butterflies that's in the other large blue 30 by 30. Mm -hmm. So this is Hypolimnus salmasis for anybody who's interested. Um, this butterfly is from Central African Republic. And uh, so it's one of the ones that you used in the design of this um, this frame that people really liked, they responded yeah. to. And I think it's interesting because the um, the first frame we were talking about, the one that's just all blue morphos, is very simple yeah. and straightforward. Mm -hmm. But um, I think you really enjoyed designing this one. It was more challenging, obviously. It's more complex of a design. Yeah. So. Yeah. So what, um, sure. so, yeah, so what did you, so it looks kind of like a star pattern, yeah, right? Well, like what, well, did you look at any pictures to sort of inspire well, well, you? Years ago, we uh, supplied Damien Hurst mm -hmm. with a lot of butterflies and mm -hmm. worked with him um, supplying him uh, for a number of years. And That was a big project. That, that really, you know, caused us to expand the entomology department. It did. Right? Mm -hmm. From what it was before. I think before we started working for him, there was maybe only a few people in the entomology department and we had to hire I know. a lot of people yeah. to keep up. I think we had maybe five or six people full time just spreading butterflies yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Um, and then he, but I, he uh, tore the wings off of them afterwards, right? Like that was what, well, so we, we prepared them so carefully <laughs> and they were so nice. And then he just, he took the wings off to put into his paintings, right? Well, perhaps, <laughs> you know, I don't know, for sure. but um, that was very exciting. But I think that's, that kind of in, inspired us to, to do more creative work mm -hmm. with the butterflies. And when we did that one, uh, what we did was, how we created, came up with that pattern was, we photographed all the, we, photo, we photographed many butterflies. Mm -hmm. And we select, we picked a number of them to use to compose that uh, frame. Mm -hmm. And on the computer, on, in Photoshop, we created the, the, uh, the layout mm -hmm. 
and we were able to move butterflies around. So when you when you created this design, you actually didn't touch any butterflies. No, it was all yeah on the on the computer basically. Yeah, it was all on the computer. We created mm -hmm. this uh, pattern, mm -hmm. and then we gave it to the entomology department, and the anthropology department uh, took the butterflies and spread them and, and pinned them. Mm -hmm and created the uh, frame. I think that's pretty cool because I imagine it would be tricky maybe to get everything to scale, right? Because all the butterflies are different sizes. Sure. And if you're trying to fit them all within a 30 by 30 inch square, you can't mess up, you know, like you have it in, in, in that frame, we have, I think some morphodidias, right? Which, mm -hmm. and also this, butterfly, the mm -hmm. Hypolimnus salmasus, which are completely different sizes. So you had to compensate for when you were doing the design, you had to make sure that you were using the butterflies to scale when you of were course. designing the, sure. the thing. So I feel like that's a, a challenge. Well, it was, but um, it, it's an interesting way to work. Mm -hmm. and once you build your library of butterflies and everything's scale of the size mm -hmm. in relationship to each other. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, very interesting what you can, can create. And maybe we can talk a little bit about the, the, the frames that we have in general. So we talked a little earlier about, um, you know, why you decided to start making your own frames because the ones that were on the market were not really necessarily the right you know quality and, and style and stuff that you and, wanted you know, and, and the bigger problem was that they we they couldn't uh meet supply mm -hmm. we were, couldn't meet demand yeah. we couldn't meet demand because we because, didn't have enough supply because we couldn't uh, get enough frames so we needed them yeah um, and uh, that was a big problem so. yeah and so but you also when you when you designed these frames the ones you were telling me earlier the ones that that were typically available were a lot thicker well they the companies that were offering frames uh, 25 30 years ago uh, didn't offer a wide variety of, of sizes mm -hmm. and uh, so we you know they would use very wide frames for very thin butterflies mm -hmm. or they would you know have a narrow frame with a very wide, fat insect in mm -hmm. it, and it, and it wasn't it wasn't pleasing looking, and uh, it, it wasn't really very nice. So we recreated frames with various depths mm -hmm. and various sizes mm -hmm. to accommodate all different uh, sizes and shapes of insects, including big, you know, very thick stick insects and. Uh, unusual things that sure. people don't usually see, yeah. you know, and I, I think that's, um, you're kind of a, you're very much, I would say a perfectionist, right? Don't you, wouldn't yeah, you agree like with that? So. <laughs> and I feel like it would bother you very much if uh, there was, if the frame wasn't the right size for the, for the butterfly, right? Like if you put a tiny butterfly in here, I feel like that would be very disturbing to you. It would be, <laughs> it would be. No, we're very careful to uh, uh, place uh, the right size butterfly in the, in the right size frame. And yeah. the frame that has the right depth, and then the frame that's oriented mm -hmm. properly, mm -hmm. and finished properly, and you know, the wood we use is a specific type of ash. Oh yeah? Why did you pick that type well, of wood? Well, because of the grain and the, and the, uh, the hardness. Okay. That we went with uh, ash, it's very nice wood. Thanks for watching part two of my conversation with my dad, Bill, about our large framed insect displays. I hope you've enjoyed these past uh, couple of weeks videos. And here are some comments from social media. Uh, Glizzy McGuire asks, which is the rarest butterfly you currently sell? That's a great question. Um, it kind of depends. Some things become more or less available over time. Uh, I would say probably the 
most rare in general of the butterflies that we sell are our bird wing butterflies. These are some of the largest butterflies in the world. They come in really beautiful, brilliant yellow and green colors. Uh, they come, I believe, only from Papua New Guinea. They're very rare and um, very special. And actually, the raising of these butterflies is very highly re regulated because they are so rare and special. So my general answer to that question would be the bird wing butterflies. So you can definitely check those out on our website. I hope that um, you think that they're as beautiful as I do. And then our second question is from... Uh, Coop Bugs, who asks, are you meaning to tell me you'll ship me a skunk skull for $36? Not exactly. Uh, what I mean to tell you is not only will I sh uh, ship you a skunk skull for $36, I will also ship you a bison shoulder mount or a fossil cave bear skeleton or a giant quartz geode. Um, these are all things that I would love to ship to you if you would like to have them. So definitely call us if you're into any of those things. And um, finally, uh, Paige Hill 980 says, um, me scared of butterflies, but still wanting a framed one, but I can't because what if it comes to life at night? Paige, not to worry. When I was a kid, we lived above the store, so I can guarantee you that almost nothing comes to life at night. I would like to create like a bug builder, like like a, some kind of a, a, a feature on the website that has all the butterflies to scale and that customers could create their own, you know, they could plug them in and, and create their own designs. That's a great idea. I feel like that would be fun, but I feel like it would be a whole thing to, 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 to design it in such a way that it's, you know, everything is to scale and everything kind of snaps into place and then we, we can execute it later. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Keep that secret. <laughs> Talk about that later. <laughs>